Hello, this is Chad Williams, and I'm gonna teach you a little bit about variables. So variables, I said in another video, is basically little boxes that we store information in. So let's start off by looking at what this means. I'm gonna create a variable, and you need a variable name, and then you need a value for that variable as well. So I'm gonna start with my variable name, which is box n. I'm gonna use equals. So equals means we're gonna put something into box n. And here we're gonna put one. So what we see on the right here is that the variable name box n has a value of one. Now if we have box n two, we can add a different value in there, which is two. Or you know what, let's put 200. And you see that box n two, the value is two. I can change that. Here, I just change it to 200. So it removes whatever's in there before then it reallocates it to uh, the new value that you're indicating. Now we can also put a series of different um, numbers. So box N3 is gonna be C. C stands for concatenate, so it's just saying put these things together in a list. I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, and five. So with that, we have box N3 has the values of one, two, three, four, and five. So we can see here it says there's one is where we start, so the first value, and we go up to five different values. So what that means is there's five values in here, um, and they're all numeric, and here you can see the values. We can definitely use other values than just one to five, of course. So if I go box n4 equals c, one, uh, three, six, zero, 10, and a, then what I get is six different numbers, but NA is in there as well. And they're not just one to five, but they're just the numbers I gave it. NA just means not a number. So often we use NA as a placeholder. So maybe I want to put something in NA later. So I could go box N4, and then we're gonna go six equals 100. So if I do that, I can replace the NA with 100. And what I did there is I indexed it. So what we see is I chose the sixth element in this by putting that in these square brackets. Let's talk about that a little bit here. So let's focus on box N4. Let me just remove everything else so we don't have to worry about it for a second. So let's just look at box N4 here. What if I wanted to see what the first number of box N4 was? Now, of course, I can just look over here, but sometimes our matrices or our variables are really large. Um, so I'm gonna just say, I wanna look at the first number in this sequence. So I put it in square brackets. Square brackets indicates where do you wanna look in this variable. And we see down here, the first number is one. Then again, if I go to the sixth number, it's 100. If I go to the third number, what's it gonna be? It's gonna be six. And there we go, that's the third number, one, two, three. Now what if I wanna look from one, two, three? So I could go one, colon, three. And suddenly we get one, three, and six, which are the first three numbers. Of course, you could do the same thing later, so you could go three, two, uh, six, and we get six, zero, 10, and 100. And so what we're doing is we're able to pick out different numbers or different locations within this box. Now, so far we've just been talking about a range of numbers in a sequence, so six, or sorry, three to six. What if we want one and six? We can use C, just like we did up here, then one and six. So what this does is says, look at the location of one and the location of six. And so we should get one and 100, and indeed we do. Of course, I can add more to this and so forth. So we see the first one is one, the third one is six, and the last one is 100. Now, so far we've just been talking about numbers, but variables aren't limited to numbers. They're, they have lots of different uses, for example, strings. So let's go box s equals hello. So what we see is box s now has hello in quotation marks. So if I ask what box x or box s is, it'll tell me it says hello. Great. Now 
I could do, just like I did before, multiple different words in box S2. So C, let's say hello, and then comma, hi. So we'd use C just like we did before. So we're just creating a list is what it's doing. And suddenly we see we have hello, and then in a separate quotations, hi. So just like we did before, we can say, well, what is the second element of box S2? And that's going to be hi. Great. So it's separating these two things because we did here, hello and hi, and then we're able to pick out which ones we want. And of course, if we go one, two, two, it's going to show us both of them. Now, what we can also do in box S3 is say, sorry about that, hello, my name is Chad. And you'll notice I use single quotes up here and double quotes down here. Uh, kind of by accident, I usually use single quotes, but they do the same thing. It's no different. Now you see five different words, but you don't see that they're separated by these quotation marks, and we only have one string here. So if I go box S3, and we're trying to find the third word, it's not going to work because the way R looks at it is that this is all just one word. It's not trying to pick out different words, it's trying to pick out different pieces of information. So here, we gave it two separate pieces of information, but here we gave it one piece of information, even though it's a more complex piece of information. But of course, if I wanted to separate that, I can go like this. then what we see, because I've separated them all within their own quotations and also separate them by columns, we have five different pieces of information within this variable. And now we can actually pick out different locations of it. For example, the third item is one, two, three, name. So now I can actually pull out different parts of it and then I can even go one to three and we see, hello, my name, but then I didn't ask for four and five. And so there is a quick look at variables, and it can be a lot more complicated, but maybe that's just a good start for you.